go to work. Hey, it's Coach Calvin. I'll welcome back to episode four of the Coach Cav Show. And today I have one of my good friends here, JL Holdsworth, um, and he's going to tell you some really cool stuff, a lot about himself and what he's doing now. But what's really cool about your, you know, you guys as athletes is you guys always want to be strong. And there's just not a stronger person I've ever met than JL. And it might be because he was, you know, the strongest person in the world at one point. So JL, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, kind of uh, what you're doing now. Well, Cav, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, really excited, uh, honored that you have me on the show. A um, little bit of my background, uh, wrestled, played football growing up, uh, played in college, uh, ended up really falling in love with strength and conditioning. Uh, I spent some time at the Olympic Training Center, I uh, was strength coach at the University of Kentucky, uh, left all that to come to Columbus, Ohio, uh, where we currently reside and uh, founded the Spot Athletics, uh, and I moved here to powerlift professionally. Uh, at the time, uh, you know, I got into powerlifting, I loved it, uh, it turns out I was pretty good at it. Uh, the first meet I did, I uh, totaled 2160, um, that's squat, bench, and deadlift total. Uh, and then I went up 2200, 23, 24. So let's just pause for a second, because I don't think a lot of people understand how how strong that is. So, you know, kind of back up a little bit, and, you know, we're in high school athletes, college athletes, you know, you're a, you're a four, five, hundred pound, you know, squatter, you're, you're a strong dude. You're a 800 pound? Puller, I mean that—that's a different world. That's lifting cars, you know. So yeah, I mean my best competition lifts. Uh, I've squatted nine fifty four, uh, bench press seven seventy five, and deadlifted eight hundred four. So. so athletes out there that are thinking that they're strong, they're his bench is your squat. His bench is sometimes collectively stronger than all of your three lifts, and, and that's just that's freakishly strong. Let's just start with that, and. You know, how did you get there? Like, how did you, what did you take the bump? Were you always just that dude? Uh, I was always very strong. Uh, you know, bench press was always kind of my thing that I was really good at. Um, and then, you know, once I found powerlifting, uh, I moved to Columbus Train at Westside Barbell. And, uh, you know, I, I did my first meet. I fell in love. And I said, you know, I've always the type of person that I want to be with the best in the world. So, you know what? Uh, there's some of those athletes, like the guys you get. They want to be around the best and be the best, so they come see you. Uh, you know, other people, they just don't care. They want to do the minimum. And since you won't accept the minimum, they don't come see you. Uh, so, you know, for me, it was moved to Columbus, Ohio. I got invited. It's a private invite only. I was invi lucky enough to be invited there to train. Uh, I moved to Columbus um, and trained with, you know, uh, you know, arguably some of the all-time greatest powerlifters in the world. You know, my training partners, uh, Dave Tate, Chuck Vogelpohl, Jim Wendler, Louis Simmons. Th those were the guys that, that we grinded with every day. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an environment uh, that, that we like to create at the spot. And, it, you know, people say iron, shapers iron, but you know, West Side's a little beyond that. That's, uh, you know, everyone's trying to kill each other every day. And now, it, so when you say iron sharpens iron, right, just like in Proverbs, and everyone's trying to kill each other, like literally there's stories of people, I mean, legit punching people, getting right. after it. Like, I'm pissed off just by the way you spotted me, so I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. And it was just, you guys didn't take anything but 100%. Like, if you showed up and it was an off day, you didn't get to choose that, right? No, there, there are no off days at Westside Barbell. Because um, everybody has that on their shirts. Like, I'm an athlete, I'm gonna go out and work, I'm gonna do some bullshit drills, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some weight in and make sure that, you know, the people see me on the bench and shit. But it's a different environment, right? It's like, hey. It's, it's not an environment that a lot of people can survive in. It's not a lot of people thrive in. Uh, that's why it's, it's one of the all-time strongest gyms in, in, in the world. Uh, because if you're there and you last and, and you can be in that environment, uh, you're going to be great. And, you know, I got to a point where uh, I had the fourth highest total in the world all time. Uh, I was training for a meet. Uh, I was doing an 1,100-pound squat. And uh, it got a little sideways. And sometimes when you push the limits of, of things, uh, things can go a little sideways. Ended up herniating a disc, uh, and then I kept pushing, kept training. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, after that, I went and tried to pull, you know, 800 pounds, and you know, did no problem. And so, ah, let's pull 830. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, and you know, it hurt worse. And I went and did the meet, and something just snapped. Yeah. And uh, you know, that for me was was you know the end of what was you know uh, you know a good run and. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, I could have been the strongest person, you know, in the history of the world at that point. Uh, but 
uh, through the injury and and through my want to be around the greatest, I had to find the greatest people at getting me back. And yeah. so, uh, unfortunately, that injury took me out of that chase, and it made me a much better strength coach. And I think that's the one thing, you know, from a lesson for all the athletes out there. Um, some people, you know, you might be the greatest, but but at some point in your life, there may be a struggle, and what you do with that struggle defines you as a person. For me, I say it all the time, I'm glad that I got hurt because if I wouldn't have, I would not be the coach I am today. Yeah, and that's what you do right now every single day at the spot. I mean, exactly. this place is phenomenal. It's, it's one of the top places that I've been to across the country. And it's not just, it's not about the the environment of like the, the, the turf and the weights. I mean, you have everything. You have the monolith, you have the racks, you have the best stuff. But you also have pretty good coaches. And one of the things that I think you do is you say, hey, it's the athlete. It's the athletes that come to you that make the difference because then as a coach, you're able to kind of fine tune what you guys want, whether it be the goal and then that process, and then you kind of give them everything. And I think it's just that resiliency, something that you talk about is just being resilient, being, hey, like you talked about with being at Westside is like, you don't have any off days. Well, if you have goals, you don't have any off days if you have goals. And it's because every day you're trying to, you're either moving closer to that goal or time slipping by you. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about, you know, your experience at Kentucky. Uh, so, you know, I was at uh, Fair State University originally, transferred to Wayne State University uh, because I learned I wanted to be a strength coach and I didn't have a degree program that, that could get me there. So I went there, was in the exercise science program, uh, was working under um, Doug Alessia, um, who's now for the last 12 years been the head strength conditioning coach at the University of Utah. And uh, so Doug and I became real close. He got an assistant job at... Um, uh, University of Kentucky uh, and he was you know I was lucky he brought me down there with him uh, so I was down at, at the University of Kentucky and you're on football right uh, yeah I worked football primarily and then I also worked on the Olympic side as well oh, awesome but, but cool. primarily football um, but you know the Olympic side at, at cheerleading was was a sport that I was in charge of and I was not super happy now were you now. doing tumbling as well you personally or no I did actually so actually I did uh, I went and I would watch practice and I mess around the block picks and do back tucks and things for it's fun. amazing so. how athletic um, somebody that is so powerful and big can be just because you have strength like you have you have power and if you do it like joking around like being you know tumbling and gymnastics and things like that but if you're if you have a foundation of strength you could generate power you could generate force and you could do a lot of really cool things well i think and too you know these are things we test you know our athletes well I've always, i'm a really explosive person and so what happened was i was a really explosive person who found weight training and uh, it had always been very valuable for me. So, you know, if you're out there and, and you're a young athlete and you're like, well, I'm really explosive and blah, 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 but once you find weight training, now all of a sudden, yeah, you're explosive and you have a 100 horsepower engine. Yeah. So it, it's going fast for a 100 horsepower engine. You keep that explosiveness and you drop a 400 horsepower engine in it. I mean, when I was in college and, and still uh, to this day, I, I don't do laundry because uh, about eight years ago I just started dating my wife and we were she was training at a YMCA I was messing around playing some basketball and uh, I told her I could dunk and I was about 265 I was, I was leaner at the time and uh, she obviously thought no way and uh, so I went in the gym said, rightfully so right let's just be honest you're just not a no no, no you're not I a basketball look, guy like, yeah, yeah I, don't, say. Like, I would take the bat yeah. and, I mean I would do probably two to one but uh, <laughs> But yeah, so you know, when I said if I if I throw this down, you always do my laundry. I never do laundry, so I can't even tell you what kind of detergent we use. But, uh, <laughs> but so I mean, it's a good win for you. Yeah, good win. Oh, but I man. mean, you know, I was uh, my last year. That was two forty five. And uh, now, was it like? A, let's just was it a good dunk or was it just was like I just oh, okay? I mean, in college, to two forty five, I could throw down, stand on the rim, two hands. I had a thirty six and a half inch standing. So that's see, that's serious power, and that only happens if you have some yeah. strength behind you. So like you said being an explosive athlete adding that you know foundation of strength you, you know you, you just enhance genetic yes. potential that's all you're doing yeah and it's pretty cool that you're able to take all your athletes and put them through that now and just give them some of those some of the things that help you kind of get through your you're finding your way you know you found your way through injury yep. you found your way through you know strength you found your way through just environment too you know people competing with each other every single day and that's pretty cool yeah I think you know one of the big things obviously 
uh, once I started getting into it, the explosiveness with the strength, that it just became something that I was obviously one of the best people in the world at. And, uh, you know, I continued once I got hurt, I started to get into grip strength training. Yeah. Uh, so I also, you know, that was something I became very passionate about. I have one of the strongest grips in the world. Uh, you know, I farmered walk Thomas Inch dumbbells, 25 yards, which sure. most people don't know. They can't even pick uh, up. Most yeah, people can't even yeah, just pick them up. There's, there's Two-handed. I've seen guys that are strong dudes that can't even pick them off the ground. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's less than 100 people in the world who can who can farmers walk Thomas Inches. It, it's a it's a great thing. And so we have a ton of grip things. I've, I've competed in the Mighty Mets, CEO is the world's strongest grip. Um, so we've become great at that. But one of the things... Uh, that I think for the young athletes out there, because I think some of those guys watching this who know Westside Barbell, who know powerlifting, who, who, who are like, yeah, those are guys that um, movement is more important than anything. And that's one thing that I think sometimes people who have, because I, I didn't, I wasn't a powerlifter who just came up. I had all these different backgrounds and sports and everything. And then I found powerlifting. And so for me, the movement is so key and I think a lot of young kids who are just they love being in the weight room if you're great in the weight room you better be better at movement because that's probably your weakness absolutely and if you're I joke around like with your staff and some of the guys is like dude, yeah. you're a 300 pound dude and you move better than a lot of you know a lot of track guys which is crazy like a multi-directional athlete as in football and in other sports like you make a cut and you move like you get out of there because you have power to be able to produce into that into that force well, angle yeah. i mean our athletes will laugh sometimes we'll have you know a kid who's really fast and jumps and does all this and i'll get out there and start running through c skips and things and they're like how the hell that yeah, how, how does that even work and so it, it is pretty funny but I, you know, I, I worked hard on the movement side, uh, and for me, it was easy as a young kid. I, I was always one of those stronger kids, so I wanted to be in the weight room because I, I was great at bench pressing, so let's yeah. bench press. Uh, so for your younger athletes who are great in the weight room, my big advice is, is you got to get better movement. And for your guys who are great at movement and who aren't very strong, they need more time in the weight room. Absolutely. And so... It, and it's basic. It's amazing yeah. because we do we do some basic stuff, but we do it extremely well. And then we do some advanced stuff for people like you that are ready. You know, doing the same, you know, three sets of 10 or 531 yeah. or whatever that is that a kid wants to do. It ain't, it ain't going to make the big push once you get up to your level. But for the guys that are doing it at the basic level, if you just fine tune that, you're going to get damn strong. Well, I think the thing that you do and, and, you know, obviously why we're such good friends is because we agree on this is that you have to take care of the basics. So what are the basics? How you move a base level of strength those those base things and and do what you're not good at everybody hates it right i mean i i hate it you know i want to do only the things i'm good at but i know there are the things i'm not good at those are the things that are going to make me great well it's not only that though it's like you need to work on your weaknesses so when you're on the field what happens you use your strength and you just enhance them yep. so that's the key that yeah, is the key yeah no keep your strength strong and, and bring your weaknesses up and by the time you get to competition what ends up happening is that you have this you know everything and you're able to use it all exactly. so um it's first of all it's, it's amazing just to be around somebody like you that is that strong I mean, you pick stuff up and it's funny because it's just like oh that's that you know jail grab this jail grab that and then all of a sudden it's just like this just bear claw grabbing something just stick and you're like oh shit that, that's big dude so but what's really interesting is you think it's all about movement and yet you're one of the strongest guys and all these guys all they want to do is get in the weight room and not do anything and they're horrible movers like and they're weak in the weight room as well right, yeah. so but let's get down to like what every high school athlete wants to do they want a bench and you're a pretty damn good bench person. so let's let's talk tactically for a second what's some things they need to do on the bench that are going to get them stronger like right now so uh, the biggest thing number one leg drive uh i preach this all the time you see kids legs moving around. but how do you do that if your feet are on the bench or off or moving i'm uh, just i'm just curious yeah. because that's what i see when i go into high school yeah, rooms yeah. and college weight rooms if your if your feet are are on the bench uh i hope you're 97 and you're about <laughs> to die because otherwise i'm gonna punch you in the face so, okay uh, and that wouldn't be a good idea like yeah no it's you know but <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, the biggest thing, you know, the leg drives, you know, we have a rule in here, unless you have to go pee, I don't want to see your legs moving around. As we call it the pee pee dance, right? Got it. Yeah, they're all over the place. And all around. Uh, so we don't want to see the pee pee dance. And so the leg drives are insanely important. You know, I've, t I've taken kids, you know, who are like, oh, I bench 300. Well, in about 20 minutes, they bench 340. And just by engaging the And what's flex. probably amazing is that 300 was more like 
two seventy right, 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 because yeah, they yeah, just yeah. they didn't put it up, and then you're actually getting them past that yeah, number because definitely. you're building everything else. And so number two is definitely uh, you know the lats are a great seat lighter. So you know just being strong. I to me honestly, uh, I love the bench press. I mean I've you know seven seventy five like I spent some time working <laughs> on it. Um, for me, I'd rather see my kids be great at pull ups than at bench pressing. Because I know if I got a kid who can knock out 30 bench, I got a really fast kid. Yeah. And so, um, but, you know, so, and that's that's when we talk about s specifics. But honestly, you know, you, kids got to work on it because it's a combine test. So the question is, is I know for a fact from a speed standpoint, like you mentioned, if you could do pull-ups and you could rep that baby out, yeah. you could, that means you're also going to be very fast. Yes. Is it going to make you stronger on the bench? So, yes, it will. And, you know, there's difference, obviously, in... Uh, strength endurance so if a kid can do 30 pull-ups then you know maybe that's not how to make his bench stronger I might have to have him do some heavy maybe 45 pound weighted pull-ups for sets yeah. of five or 90 pounds or you know I have a jiu-jitsu guy uh, he uses the gi grips yeah and we've done sets of five with 100 pounds of chain on it so like, I'm gonna pause you right there because as a football athlete like I mean that's what we do like we grab people I mean I have a defensive player and an offensive player if you're inside the box you're grabbing too right. anyone tells you you're not then you know your right, problem yeah. yeah but you're grabbing how important is grip strength yeah and grips so incredibly important I think for for the young kids out there um, you know some of the stuff that gets done uh, say a barbell hold especially thick bar stuff yeah Unless you're a wrestler and you're grabbing a wrist, that's not applicable in, in football. A lot of it, you know, thinner towel pull-ups, things where I'm going to be on a jersey. If I'm a lineman, I'm, I'm going to be in here. Yeah. yeah. I hope you ain't out there. But I'm going to be in here and I'm going to be grabbing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that hand strength is so incredibly important. And the bigger thing that's more important is that if we build this incredibly strong athlete and, and all of a sudden we build hips and all these things we want to build and they have weak grip strength, it's all for naught because it'll be the weakest chain in the lane. Yeah, and that's the one that's the connector. And it's what connects me to you. Yeah, exactly. So and if, if I don't have a strong connector, then it doesn't matter. Else, it's going to pop. It does. It's going to pop. Exactly. Absolutely. So from a bench standpoint, how many days a week? Does that matter? Is it just to load the freaking bar up? I mean, I know, you know, it's funny. It's like, you know, guys doing, you know, bench one day. We go over to West Side. I said, what are they doing today? They're bench. It's bench. Like, there's no other thing to do, right? You just go do it. Now, what, what is that? What do you think you got to do for a high school kid? Well, I think for a high school kid, it, it you know, two different things. At a lower level, yeah. Now we got to build general strength. Mm -hmm. So you know, I like to say like you can't sculpt a pebble. So on a kid that that's younger, what's weak? Everything's weak. Yeah. You know. So well, how do we find his weakness? Well, his whole body. So get it better. So for him, it's just that general. When we start to get to our more advanced, you know, collegiate NFL, now all of a sudden. You know, my, my NFL athletes, now I'm worried about shoulder integrity. Yeah. So now I want to look at, like, well, if it's in season, out of season, what's their history? So at that point, that athlete may never bench press, but they're going to make sure that triceps are super, super strong. Lats, posterior shoulder, all these other things. So you and guys do, like, band press downs. What do you do? We do 100 of those in the gym every day in our place. What do you guys do yeah, for triceps? I'm, I'm a huge fan. So when it comes to tricep, and, and I don't want to get technical. It's not the part of the show that, you know, I know it's just for to help the kids get better. But, you know, for, for you high school athletes out there, when you see a cat guy with a big tricep up yeah. here, that's just great for the beach. When you see someone with meat hanging off by their elbow, yeah, that guy is gonna punch you really hard. If you're if you're a D lineman and you have an old lineman standing across, you got big triceps and nothing by the elbow, you ain't got much to worry about that day. Yeah, but if Just they got the guy's got a piece of slab they got right there, a slab right down by the elbow, yeah. that dude is gonna punch you like no tomorrow. Got and it. so those are things that you can see as a player and eye that guy up across from you yeah and so it helps to kind of know like hey that guy he's gonna punch real hard or i'm gonna be able to get right through that and you want to be that guy and you want <laughs> you you to be that. they're looking at it like i don't want to i don't exactly. mess with that look at that yeah. damn so, freaking porterhouse right, right there yeah. so those are those are things so i think it is individual based on on the athletes and that's the one thing at spot effects we're big on nobody it's a you know we're a private facility you know like you no one walks in your building unless they're working with a coach absolutely and so for us you know, we're a little different. Obviously, we have our sport ready for, you know, we started at eight years old and go up to professional athletes. Then we have our life ready. 
And so those are our adults who still want to perform at their best. And I mean, I watch some of your, your girls, yeah. your females, ladies that are in their 40s and 50s. Yeah. They're stronger than most high school, college kids that I see. I mean, they look good, too. Oh. They look the part, which yeah. is cool. I'm talking like their legs are strong. And not only look good, I'm not talking physically. I'm talking about the way they move. I'm talking about how do they, they grab a bar? How do they approach the bar? How do they go about consciously lifting? Those are the things that matter to me. And I, I think... You know, for the young athletes too, it's that etiquette. Um, you know, if you're going uh, on a visit and you go into a weight room and you know how to behave because you've been at SSI, or you know what I mean, you've yeah. been at your facility and you know how to behave, that makes a huge impact. We just sent a player to, to a team, freshman, the strength coach loves him, and all the upper class are like, man, every time you lift, he's over by you, he's talking to you, he's doing this. Well, you know that the position coaches, you know they're talking to the strength coach. Absolutely. Saying, what freshman do you like? Who's working hard? And on your visit, you know they're sizing you up. So if you come in there and you've got great technique and you know what you're doing and you know how to act, you know the etiquette. So the weight room matters because, you know, for the high school kids who don't know and your college kids already know, more time will be spent with that strength and conditioning coach. Than what your position coach or any, any other coach. coach. Absolutely. They're with you year round. Year round. And they have the biggest impact. And so, you know, being able to, like, you know, we were talking, our 10-year-olds have better weight room etiquette than if you go to any commercial gym. And it's so, a game changer. It, it's the it's the attitude, the environment exactly. of the place, and it's the respect. I mean, they approach they approach this as part of of getting better, exactly. not just my mom do dropped me off. They exactly. approach this as like this is the the track that I'm on to accelerate my path of where I want to go. Exactly. That's what it is. It's basically a turbo boost. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I think that you know, uh, it's it's always great to to be able to, for us to connect and talk because so much is the light then we share the ideas so you know I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be able to improve my program for all my people because of some we talked about and then you know hopefully you go back and some of the stuff I say you take and that's where I think you know when when these high school kids are looking for who do I want to work with you got to look at like you know where are these coaches going who are they talking to you know are they continually learning getting better because I, I don't want to train with someone who isn't always getting better, you know, like how you well, when we talk about getting better. I mean, yeah, we're here, you know, at the spot, you know, one of the top places in Columbus. But what's also really cool is, you know, you brought in a collection of your network to improve everybody as a whole. There's 40 people in there and 20 of them are division one coaches. You know, the other 20 are somewhere at the pro programs and doing some amazing things as well. There's a four time Olympic athlete in that room right now. And that's the game changer. It's like, yeah. who else to listen to a guy that's, you know, in his, you know, freaking 50s and He's an Olympian. Yeah, not 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 Olympian, a four-time Olympian. Four-time Olympian. Oh, yeah. Excuse so, me. <laughs> no, and, and a strong one too. Not yes. just uh, and, and, not and a skinny one. Knows about strength. Yeah. So, and and I think that that's one thing you know that that the kids I, I think they take that from us as well, is that they see us always getting better, and so then it's going to push them to get better. Yep. And so you know it, it's it's just the lead by example, you know, and so. So you say lead by example. Your coaches, I see that they're not only pretty good shape, but they had some of the same tendencies that, that I had when I was an athlete and that some of our own athletes do. What do you do with them? Like, what's the difference? Uh, because yes, they, they yeah. got a little bit of an umph in them. Like, they're still, they're on the coaching side, but they're still like, a, um, they're a grinder still. So what is yeah, that, what's no, going all on? Of our, all of our coaches are required to compete. So we, we won't hire anybody in our organization. So our, our administrative assistant, it doesn't matter. You have to compete to work. So you're picking up a phone, but yeah, you're, you're you better be out there picking up some serious weight. You got it. Yeah, I mean, just the other day we did our strength staff, and it was it was on some Olympic lifting technique, and our admin was the demo person who was doing the lifts, <laughs> and we were coaching. She doesn't need to know how to coach, but she's a lifter. She competes, and so well, it's just the I mean, creating that environment. You know, it's like everybody as a whole is like. They're looking for excellence. They're looking for people that understand what it's like for them to get better. And they're also like, it's the ability to be around people that want the same thing as you. And I think it was all yeah. weird. Like you, you might have one to two to three other kids, maybe that that are gonna want to play at the next level in your high school. That might be it that are on that same team. Or there's a lot of people that say, "Hey, I want to do it." but yeah. they won't put the work in. And if you're not putting the work in, don't tell me you want to do it because you're just wasting my time. Everybody me, from, show me. yeah, 
everybody from when I walked into the room to the person out there to the person freaking you know cleaning up not only are they strong but they're enhancing that environment and that's what's key in my opinion no I, I, I say all the time I say I don't want to coach in here everybody in here whether it's an eight-year-old kid it's a pro athlete it's someone who's 45 and just wants to run a faster marathon everybody who's in here is for better performance and so I don't want someone being a part of their lives who isn't here for better performance and so all my coaches they need to walk in every day going i have a goal in my training today and i have a goal that i want to hit and i have a competition that's coming up that i need to train for and so and even if that competition's life like for some people it's just like hey they just need to be better right but for my coaches they need an event and but for their client it might just be life like yeah. i want to garden without my back i want to perform i want to be the best gardener i want to be able to plant a yeah, but how plant. important is that you're like you're doing that for your coaches like how important is that for a high school kid that wants to play at the college level if they don't have goals whether it be their bench or their squat or their 40 if they don't have goals like they're just blindly just doing the next best program the next best thing and it's not the best thing it's not the oh the cool gadget that's going to get them there we talk about this all the time like the fancy drills and shit that shit ain't going to do anything it's the grind of doing it right it's the focus on the details that's going to well, do it and i think too like for you know for us for me i love training like that i would spend i've spent more time and and i think one time I, I thought about it at one point i think maybe somewhere around fifty thousand hours at least i've spent in inside a facility it's probably a lot more now yeah. i don't remember exactly what it was but i've spent more time in a training facility than anywhere my house anywhere else and so um you know it's funny to me because you know for the high school kid wanting to go to the next level their goal should be here's my numbers whatever my weakness is in recruiting that's my goal yeah so if you're a 400 pound high school bencher it's not 425 450 no. who gives a crap you're no, already but if you're running a, a five flat 40 well, who cares how much you can bench who no one cares yeah because you ain't catching anyone to use power so i think that those are the things they have to have those goals to work towards and and they need to be performance related to football so that they're making them a better football player and you know things like uh how fast you run a mile well i don't care as a football player yeah. and so um those performance goals for them may be different but getting to that next level and, and for a lot of high school kids i know i was there at one point i wanted to be in the nfl and you know that's just genetically maybe not for everybody just like being one of the strongest people in the world isn't for everybody. I can, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I can naturally do things that people train their whole life. I mean, I could do things at twenty. You know, at, at when I was in, in college, uh, you know, I I bench press five thirty five. You know, in college, and you know, most people work their whole life for a five hundred pound bench press, and I'm twenty one years old, and I'm just like, yeah, what 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 is this good or? Yeah. And so, well, like you talk about your story, you know, being at Westside and like. Oh, I just want to do this number, and you didn't have any mental roadblocks. I think no. that was a, that was yeah, a big no, deal a for big, you. Is yeah. that you didn't have any mental roadblocks? And because nobody was in your ear saying like that's not possible, and like because you didn't even know, you set your mind to something and you made it happen. So I, I think one of the biggest things that anybody, uh, if you're a high school athlete, if you're a collegiate athlete, you're a professional athlete, um, you know, because I've been at all three levels. I was a high school athlete, I was a collegiate athlete, and I got paid to pick heavy shit up. And to me, positive self-talk, positive imagery, seeing yourself. So if you're a high school kid and you go to bed every night and you fall asleep, you're missing an opportunity. Because you don't fall asleep before you lay there, you close your eyes and you visualize yourself. If you want to be a division one player, you, whatever, whoever, if you don't know what school you want to play for, then you just visualize yourself in a stadium filled with 100,000 people running out of whatever tunnel it is. And you see that and you, you smells and the sounds and all the helmets around you. You see that and you run out onto the field. And if you're in college and it's playing on Sunday, then every night before you go to bed, you see that. Because if you don't see that, it can't happen. And so to me, going to sleep at night before visualizing those things, you miss an opportunity every single day. And, and for me, I never went to sleep without seeing myself squatting 1,000 pounds, deadlifting 800 pounds, bench pressing 800 pounds. Because I knew that if I went to sleep without doing that stuff, I was missing an opportunity to make myself better every single day. Well, 
I don't know what else to say at that point. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, you're gonna put the work in. And if this is a roadblock for you, then it's gonna, it's gonna be a barrier and you're not gonna be able to get past that hurdle because that is what drives everything else. Exactly. That's what drives everything else. You guys don't know what your body's physically capable of. This man has picked up more weight than what I could do times two, times three. So it's impressive, yes, but what's most impressive, in my opinion, is that you set your mind to something and then you made it happen. And these kids have an opportunity to do that and you guys have the opportunity to do that. Like all you have to do is just say that you're gonna do it here, focus on it, and then make it happen. You find great people, they're across the country. It doesn't matter where they are, you'll find somebody and they will give you a chance as long as you make your chance. You no one's gonna hand it to you, you're gonna need to make it happen. So with that, man, thank you so Thanks, much, brother. man. I love you. Love you, brother. And just keep working. All Get right. after it. Thanks.